Hey, COVID-19 is still top of mind for many of us, and that's why every week we get your coronavirus questions answered during a special segment called Q&A with Dr. Dave. And joining me right now is CBS4 medical editor, Dr. Dave Nida. Great to see you, Dave, uh, and I, I trust you're well. So the World Health Organization has just announced it was ending its trial of the drug hydroxychloroquine, and that was once to some considered a promising treatment for coronavirus. So why end the trial here? Well, uh, the trial was ended because they really didn't find much benefit from the use of the drug. But the problem was the same week that the uh, trials were announced as being done, uh, a big study came out of Henry Ford Foundation in Michigan, which showed that uh, the medication was helpful. So all of a sudden we're back to a state of confusion. I think that what happens here, it is the study that gets the most headlines is the one that gets people's attention here. And there are contradictory studies all of the time. In fact, when you look at the use of hydroxychloroquine right now, it is being looked at in about 226 studies. And so it's ongoing and it will be a while before we have a definitive answer. I think the main thing to understand is that we don't think it's a game changer. We're not even sure how much it helps and if it does help, how to give it, when to give it, how long to give it. Mm. And that's actually on par with things like the antiviral drugs, dexamethasone, uh, even plasma infusions. We know they help, but we just don't call them game changers. Nothing has been found to be a cure at this point in time. Yeah, they, they've had some luck with some drugs limiting the virus's ability to replicate. Nothing kills it, though. There's nothing, I mean, even remdesivir, which has been touted, only stops the reproduction or slows that down, right? Correct. And, you know, nothing, once again, is a cure. And that's what everybody's looking for. Everybody's looking for the magic bullet. And unfortunately, it just does not exist at this point in time. Yeah. And with hydroxychloroquine, uh, chloroquine before this outbreak, research showed it had never had success on any viral agents. And so this would be totally different in that way. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last week, Governor Polis announced he would be shutting bars back down after allowing them to reopen. We tried. Do you think he made the right decision there? I, I do. I think what he did was he took a look at two things, internally and externally. Uh, took a look at what was going on inside of Colorado. Our cases have been rising. Our hospitalizations have been rising. And then you take a look outside at the surrounding states. Take a look at Arizona. Take a look at California. Take a look at uh, Florida and Texas. And what you're seeing is there is a huge rise in numbers there. And a lot of it is attributed to bars and parties. And so I think that uh, the governor actually made a very good decisive, proactive move in uh, making that decision when it came to bars. I think it's gonna be really important in the weeks to come as we take a look at other venues and whether or not we're gonna be able to keep them open, all depending on how our behavior is and what the numbers wind up doing. And we're finding more and more that it's our exhalations, isn't it? And, and to a great extent, less so with surfaces a little bit, right? It is, uh, and if you take a look at where we worry about uh, uh, coronavirus being spread, it's places that are poorly ven ventilated, they're smaller, uh, they're crowded, uh, people tend to sp spend more time there, and so as a result, the exposures are greater. Mm -hmm. And there's no social distancing, for example, in bars. Uh, people tend to drink a lot, and as you drink more, the less and less you are to follow things like distancing or even consider wearing a mask. Lots of people got together for the 4th of July. Now, could that lead to another rise in coronavirus cases? I think that's what we're really worried about right now because we just simply don't know. But uh, the tendency is to see a rise in the weeks after a, an event, things like uh, Mother's Day, things like Memorial Day, and now 4th of July, which is just a giant holiday. And so really what we're hoping not to see is sometime within the next week to about three weeks, 
a rise in the number of cases and then hospitalizations. The other thing to think about is it's not necessarily you're going to follow that particular timeline. Some people do wind up having become infected over the July 4th holiday. What will happen is if some are asymptomatic, have no symptoms, they can spread the virus uh, to family members, loved ones, coworkers, and so forth. And those may not show up until a month and a half from now. It's going to be a matter of time before we see what winds up coming out of this holiday. Mm, very interesting. Dr. Dave, as always, thank you very much. Great to see you. And you'll be back here next Monday, 11 a.m., as we answer more coronavirus questions. And to see all of our Q&A with Dr. Dave segments, you can just visit us at cbsdenver.com.